Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Having a little late night uh, video because something new happened and I wanted to get it out because uh, I'm gonna go, well, I'm gonna do this video, watch a little bit of Highlander. I've never seen the whole Highlander. I'm like halfway through. It's okay. Um, and uh, then tomorrow is the, is the last day for Iron Sight. So I was hemming and hawing because you, you all know that the, you have these campaigns and then they just transition into an online store. It's called In Demand. Um, and, and I was hemming and hawing. I was like, well, maybe I'll keep it until the, the file's ready to go to the printers. I was like, no, I want this thing to be the 31 days, one month, because I want the <coughs> these numbers to be hard and fast comparable to what's out in the stands. So um, got this uh, right here. It's uh, 1142. We got about, it's a little bit over. 26 hours left. It ends. Uh, uh, it ends at a uh, uh, midnight Pacific time. So 26 hours left. Do a little refresh on it. Uh, so things always ramp up in the uh, you know in the last uh, a day or so. But what really made it ramp up and I, and I showed this in an earlier video was this co cover. Oh my gosh! I have just been looking at this thing on and off all day. So here's what also is very, very exciting. So I said my goal was 2,500, which should put it into the uh, top 10. So uh, the, the latest um, Comicron numbers, and this is 120 pages. So it's a, it's, it's a graphic novel or a trade paperback. Uh, so right now we got 2,270 uh, backers. And we see here that uh, basically 2,462 will make it uh, take the uh, number 10 spot. So uh, that's very, very exciting. And obviously 2,500 will definitely take it. So we're getting so close to the goal. You know, on the on Jawbreakers, I talked about money as the goal, but I, I really just feel like uh, numbers is the goal. So you look at this. Uh, uh, we're about to be in the top 10, and everything above it is like... <laughs> Really famous stuff, Infinity Gauntlet and Dark Knight's Metal and, and uh, Southern Bast Bastards. Uh, uh, is, so we're in good company. I'm very excited about it. So this is what I wanted to do this video on because uh, this one, I, 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 I can't believe it. I'm shocked. Uh, so uh, Noelle Stevenson, weirdly enough, doesn't block me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm always shocked when people uh, uh, haven't blocked me. But uh, anyway, uh, so uh, Noelle Stevenson started off, you know, indie, moved into uh, animation, and then very, very quickly became a showrunner uh, of a major uh, cartoon, the She-Ra reboot on Netflix. And I want you to just drink this in. Noelle Stevenson today around lunchtime. Team jackets for the She-Ra writer's room. Shira Shiro, and now we're gonna click on the pictures, and we're gonna notice, we're gonna notice, we're gonna notice an almost complete lack of diversity. Uh, there's a saying that uh, A people uh, hire other A people, B people hire C people, and now we've found out what C people <laughs> Hire. See people basically hire themselves. This reminds me of like a issue of Exiles where it's like, hey, here's 40 versions of Blink from all these different timelines, but they're all kind of recognizably the same person. This literally looks like the last scene from an M. Night Shyamalan movie where we found out that Rachel Maddow has like this farm where she keeps people to give her compatible organs so she can live forever. Um, uh, yeah, the elephant in the room is, uh, it looks like they hired a, uh, a bunch of white girls. <laughs> and so one or two of these might be mixed Hispanic. Um, I'm, you know, the other elephant in the room is it does look like just on visual, uh, uh, what do they call that? Not stereotyping, profiling. 63,000% lesbian. Oh, well, I'll say 60%. Um, but the deal is that uh, it really made me think about something. So I did, <laughs> you know, I'm still processing the, the very weird experience on the Jim Jeffrey show. And one of the things, when I was starting to get bothered and I wanted to get salty, but I was like, eh, I'm going to look bad if I get salty. So I'm just going to just smile. <laughs> lay, I just lay back and think of England. Um, 
But uh, he was going on, oh, racism, hey, diversity, man, you know, hiring practice, yeah, women, yeah, African Americans. And like, I'm, th- I'm sitting there thinking, it's like, dude, I've met you and your entire crew, at least the crew that, you know, when they go out and do shoots. And it was 12 people. And there was only one of them that wasn't white. <laughs> um, so what happened again is that um, uh, you get Noel Stevenson. Um, I will say probably uh, not qualified in the standard way for, you know, uh, the typical showrunners at least tend to be in their 30s. They've, you know, been assistant showrunners or they've been uh, directing. Uh, literally, like two years ago, Noel was designing props on, on, on some minor cartoons and all of a sudden... Uh, I also like that <laughs> there's multiple elephants in this room. Uh, I also like that they have the fan art in the background. And every single piece of fan art is more feminine than the official design. It's called being on model in animation. You know, you get the model sheets and then you draw. And then it's something is either on model, it matches them, or it's off model. And it, it doesn't have to be a lot. It can literally be a longer neck, a shorter neck, uh, eyes of a slightly different shape. Um, I was a 3D animator, but I studied a little bit of 2D animation. Um, uh, none of these are on mono. <laughs> Absolutely none of them. I mean, they're recognizably uh, doing a take on Noel Stevenson's, uh, like I said, uh, masculine uh, uh, tom, tomboy. I don't even know what you call it. Um, but uh, so one thing was very interesting because, uh, like I said, the, I was interviewed by Jim Jeffries, but not really. I was interviewed by the producers who wrote questions and he repeated them after reading them off a piece of paper. And he was basically saying, you know, he was saying like, well, we need programs for diversity. Otherwise, there won't be diversity. In. And he's like, it can't just be all white guys. And, I, and, you know, I made the point that it hasn't been all white guys since like the early 60s, not only in, in the crew, you know, the people who make the comics, but the characters. And my basic thing is, you know, as long as you're not a complete asshole, diversity is going to naturally happen. I have never in my life said, man, I need some black friends. I need one or two gays, probably like a a Jewish person, preferably from Israel, but preferably uh, supportive of the Palestinians. No, no, it's, it's... it's just always happened. If you interact in the world, no matter where you are, even growing up in Nebraska and Indiana, if you're a normal person, your uh, groups are going to be diverse. Now, you might be in a 95%, you know, white town, but, you know, you're still going to have a gay friend, the other friend who's a Protestant. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but uh, it's very, very funny to me. That, you know, we, you know, Comicsgate, an actually provably diverse uh, group, are being called Nazis bigots all day long every day. And then uh, we're being uh, lectured uh, about racism by people uh, (laughs) who are literally in a whiteness competition. I was shocked at how white the Jim Jeffries show crew was. It was and, and then they couldn't stop talking about racism. And now we've got this that it's, it's, uh, you know, people said it. This is a roller derby train. And roller derby is, uh, how would I describe roller derby? It's, uh, it's okay Cupid for lesbians. Um, uh, uh, and I'm being a little tongue in cheek. Um, but, um, it's, so one thing is, is, you know, uh, as, uh, Jim was mouthpiecing other people's ideas, he said, uh, you know, uh, I, I basically, uh, I need, uh, black people. And uh, women on my team uh, to tell me things, uh, so I know them, so I know if I'm going too far or this and that and the other thing. And it's, the thing is uh, that uh, black people and women are not freaking space aliens. <laughs> like you don't have to be them to be able to extrapolate or empathize or kind of guess. Uh, you know, hey, this will probably go over uh, okay, and this uh, won't. One of the reasons, my theory, is that SJWs like this crew who uh, talk about diversity and are absolutely not diverse. I don't know how, like, like, she's very proud of this. It had 6,000 likes. Like, you don't go, it's like, oh, how, it's all, it's all white women. It's most likely uh, all uh, gay white women. Maybe half Hispanic, one of them, but... 
Wow. Wow. Um, and then the same thing, the Jeff, one of these uh, reasons these people talk about, you know, having all these systems and, 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 and quotas and hiring is, is not because everyone needs that stuff to have a diverse group of friends and diverse, you know, hire, I've, you know, I've hired, you know, men and women and people of different races and people of different uh, nationalities. Um, uh, and uh, some people I hire don't even know what they look like. <laughs> I just I just go to uh, pay him on PayPal and some weird money denomination I've never seen before pops up. I go, eh, okay. Um, but uh, normal people don't need programs to ensure and encourage diversity. But SJWs do because we see they do not hew to it. They hew to sameness. They hew to echo chambers. This is the natural trajectory of their lives. You know, Jim Jeffries and his crew can talk about racism all day long, and they all they do is hire other white people. We got the diversity commandos right here, and what do they do? It, honestly, if I was a casting director, they're like, "Ooh, we have a we have a, a, a <laughs> we have a, a scene set at a, at a lesbian bar," and then like uh, I cast these people, they would say, "It's a little on the nose, don't you? Th you know, yeah." Um, but uh, we don't need diversity programs. But apparently the crew of uh, She-Ra and the Jim Jeffries show do. So short little video before I go learn about the Kurgan. People are always saying, right? I don't know. They're not Highlanders. Only the Highlanders are Highlanders. They're immortals. Still, I'm still not really sure of the quickening, but I know they they saw a, a ram and then they started running and gave them. I don't really understand that part. Um, but anyway, all right. Made it past 10 minutes. Ugh, got that. Oh, I just nailed that freaking YouTube algorithm. So let's go ahead and do a little shebang over here. See if I got any more shekels. And oh, wow, wow. 2275. Oh my gosh. I, I'm not that good at math, but I think I'm like uh, 180 backers away from the number 10 graphic novel in the country. Graphic novel, trade paperback, whatever. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Uh, make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks, everyone. Give the super chat, the Patreon, and the Indie Go Go. You got, oh, yeah, 20, uh, 26 hours. And uh, I, I, you're going to like this. You're going to like this. People are saying I, I under I undersold it and sold it. Well, uh, basically, if you like any kind of shooting them up, if you like Lethal Weapon, if you like No Country for Old Men, you're going to like this. I mean, this this poster is really what it is. That is, that's the movie. Uh, if you like boobs, if you like tiny waists, if you like guns, if you like cartridges ejecting out of the side, you're going to like this. Like cowboy hats, you're going to like this. You're going to like Iron Sights. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, in the... I'll have uh, more new comic reviews, and then um, I, I wish I wish the program wasn't stopping at like 2 a.m. locally, or I'd do a, a live stream. I will definitely do a, a, a long live stream tomorrow to get that final push, and then on Thursday I'm going I'm going to treat myself, and I'm going to go see Mission Impossible uh, peeing without pooping. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll have more videos up tomorrow.